All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending today's uh, today's session at uh, weekend session of Community Healers. We have Anshul Sharma here, and Anshul is a lawyer by profession. She is um, by passion, by 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 experience, and by compassion. She is um, she, she she went through a tough time in her life, discovered the power of gratitude and uh, gratitude and forgiveness and thankfulness and all of those things. And she went there and she refound, rediscovered herself, rediscovered family ties, rediscovered a zest for life and so on and here she's in front of you today she's going to talk about successful spirituality which is an interpretation of Deepak Chopra's book the seven spiritual laws of success it'll be interesting to see what he has to say there over to you Marshall all the best and looking forward to your session thank you so much for sharing your time thank you so much Sid. thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity and I welcome you all to this session first of all I request some of you at least to show me your faces your beautiful faces I request you all to just switch on your video so that I know who I'm talking to, what I'm saying, whether you're understanding it, and what's your reaction to it. Hi, Ditu. Thanks. Thanks for the love. <laughs> so, if we are cross-eyed, you will explain again. How will you know whether we have understood? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm scrolling, probably. <laughs> okay. Suppose we do this, then yeah. you can, you know, then you can start explaining again. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm good now. Oh, Sorry. Thanks. Yeah, so uh, today's session is about achieving success through spiritual means. This session has been largely taken from uh, Deepak Chopra's book, uh, which is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. Before we move forward, I request all of you to just briefly close your eyes for a minute. Let us remember our divine. Our mentors, our masters, teachers, and loved ones. As we undertake this session today, I pray to my masters to guide me in presenting whatever I want to today with all of you in the best possible manner. And I pray to your masters that you gain the maximum out of it and you benefit immensely after you leave this session. Thank you. So that was, as I was telling you, um, this is based on Deepak Chopra's book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. As you know, Deepak Chopra is a world acclaimed author. He has authored many books and this one remains one of my favorites and it is one of his best sellers till date. What does success mean to you? The first thing that I want to ask all of you is, what does success mean to you? If anybody wants to come across and share it with you. Please unmute yourself and start speaking. Prosperity. Prosperity. Yeah, absolutely. What else? Um, for me, is contentment. Contentment. Beautiful. Contentment. Beautifully said it. Beautiful. Yeah, definitely it is. Anyone else? Yes, yeah, so success can mean material abundance. Success can mean good health. Success can mean having a zest to live the life. Success can mean any number of things to any number of people. But simply put, success means the ability to fulfill our desires with effortless ease. So the words here are the ability, fulfill our desires and effortless ease. We have the capability, but we are not able to fulfill our desires. Sometimes we are able to fulfill our desires, but it's not effortless. It takes a lot of effort. So in our childhood conditioning, in the conditioning that we've had over the years, two things stand out. Ki success ke liye bahut hard work chahiye, and success always comes at the expense of others. Whereas it is not true. Hard work is needed, but if you follow the spiritual laws that are laid down in nature, you would not, you know, you do you would not use to do the gada manat as they say. And success does not definitely come at the expense of others. When you are climbing the ladder of success, that does not mean that you are stepping onto others. To each his own. Everybody 
has a lot of gain from the universe, a lot of things to gain from the universe. It is not that I am taking anybody else's share for my own use. So these two concepts need to change. We need to have a spiritual approach to success and to effluence. What does effluence mean? Effluence means to flow. And success is not measured by how much money I have achieved, what I have become in life. Success is measured by how efficiently and effortlessly I'm co-creating with the universe. The universe is this vast potential field. How much I'm able to gain out of the universal laws, how efficiently and how effortlessly I am able to achieve what I am here to achieve. That is the true measure of success. So, you know, hard work, struggle, frustration, this is not what our ancient sages taught us. They knew that the internal reference point for anything was our spirit. The spirit, it lies at the source of all our achievement in life. Before we start thinking about success, instead of looking, looking outside at people, at circumstances, at things, we need to begin at the spirit level, begin at the source, because our spirit is the source itself. It is the pure potentiality. It is where unlimited potential lies because it is the unmanifest consciousness. It is, uncon it is consciousness lying in its unmanifest form, waiting for us to turn it to manifest into our desires. That's what we want to do. We need to use the power of spirit. We need to use the path of spirituality to achieve success in life. Easier said than done, I understand, but let's understand one thing. In every seed lies the promise of a forest. As they say, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but can you count the number of apples in a seed? Because every seed lies the potential of forming a forest. In every seed, there is a promise of a forest. So we are that seed. We are that seed in the forest. We are that seed in the apple. We have the potential of harboring any number of apple trees as possible. And the physical laws of the universe are the processes by which the unmanifest, the Shiva, the unknown, the invisible becomes manifest. It becomes known and it becomes visible because consciousness, divine, God, whatever you may call, it is seeking expression through us to manifest. The Shiva, by using Shakti, wants to become the Prakriti. We need to listen to our instincts, the deeper instincts, if we give them a chance if we listen to them, if we follow the set rules that are laid down in nature, success in life is inevitable. That's what the session is all about. I will start with the laws uh, soon. Anybody want to share anything? Okay, right now, Shay. Okay. So the first law. The first law that Deepak Chopra says is the law of pure potentiality. Potential. Everything, everybody has potential. And what is our potential? We are potential itself. We don't have a potential. We are the potential. We are pure consciousness. We are divine. It is our true nature, the essential nature of me, of you, of every living being in the universe is pure potentiality, right? Because this is the field of all possibilities and immense creativity. Once we are able to access this field of all possibilities and infinite creativity, this field of silent awareness, they say it is anadi ananta. It doesn't have a sound. It doesn't have a beginning. It doesn't have the end. It is just chetana. It is just awareness. How much of manifestation can happen from this unmanifest energy is entirely up to us. 
once we leave our conditionings of our past and are able to tap into this awareness, this consciousness, then anything is possible. Anything means anything is possible. So the universe is pure potential. We are pure potential. All of us are same. If you see the word universe, what does it mean? Uni. Uni means one. And verse means song. All of us, the universe is singing one song. All of us, we may be made of different elements, different five elements. Some have three elements, some have four elements, some is the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, human kingdom. All of us, we play one song. We listen to one song. In some religions, it is called Om. It is called Omkar. It may be called by any name, but it is that one song. And when we start singing the same song of the universe, once we are able to tap into the potential of the universe, then what happens? We are able to access power, intelligence, and infinite organizing ability. Because please remember that every desire that we have has the potential to manifest. It, things will organize beautifully around it once we start following the rules laid down in nature. So how do we experience this law? How do we put it into place? How do we shape it? How do we shape this law of pure potentiality? First thing is just be. We are a being. We are here to be. We are a human being, just like there are living beings. Everybody is a being, but we forget that. We are caught up in the daily activities, in the routines, in the running around here and there. And we forget the simplest of acts that we are supposed to do. Just be. And how do we be? By practicing silence. Close your eyes. Sit silently for five minutes. Practice it daily. Practice your meditation daily. What happens when we silence our mind? Can anyone tell me? Why do we say, why so much importance on silence, on meditation? Why so? Because we are then one with the source when we are silent. Exactly. Beautiful, beautiful. Exactly. Because the mind stops its chatter, right? If we are, if the mind is constantly chattering, it's behaving like that monkey. What is happening? We are not able to listen to signals that the universe is trying to give to us. When we are being, when we are practicing silence, imagine sitting by a pond, throw a small uh, pebble into it and watch the ripples. The ripples are felt all across the pond with just a small pebble. When we are silently sitting as a pond in the universe, the pond is the universe, throw a thought and see the ripples. And then you will realize the power of silence. As just like a pebble, a thought is thrown into the pond of the universe, ripples are created, which come back to us. The potential is ignited. That is why it is very important to silence our mind and directly go to the source. Meditation helps in that. Meditation helps us in directly going to the source. So it is very important for us to practice silence and meditation. Second way in which we can experience our pure potentiality is by practicing non-judgment. Imagine your day, it's four o'clock in the evening, you know, you spent a good number of eight hours since you were awake. How many times you've judged people? Somebody is right, somebody is wrong, somebody is good, somebody is bad. What has happened? You're constantly judging people. You're constantly judging yourself. I didn't do this. I should have said this. You're constantly judging situation. This is not the right thing to have happened. Why is this happening to me? Constantly judging things that are happening to you, people that are all around you. Practice non-judgment because that is what exactly it does. It, you know, just like a pebble, it again, can, you know, uh, it connects us to the universe. It connects us to the silence. The mind goes silent and we are able to connect to the source. That's what non-judgment does. We spend time in nature. Nature is abundant. Nature is displaying all the laws. Nature is displaying the laws of the universe beautifully. Spend time in nature. Connect to the environment. Watch the sunrise. Sit by the river. You know, do your gardening. Look at 
the birds singing look at the butterflies dancing around look at the flowers when you're spending time in nature you are tapping into the creative processes of nature and you will get such beautiful answers which you've never imagined so some affirmations i want to share with you if you guys want to note down you may please note down in the morning when you get up you may say to yourself today i will sit silently for 10 minutes i will close my eyes and i will make it a point that i will sit silently for at least 10 minutes today i will practice meditation deep for 5 minutes 10 minutes but i will ensure do it for 5 minutes 10 minutes in the beginning for the first 2 3 weeks do it eventually you can increase the time another thing you can say today i shall not judge anyone or anything that occurs i shall judge nothing do it for 20 days start your day with another affirmation throughout the day i will remind myself not to judge because in the morning i got up and said i shall not judge anyone but what happens is as the day progresses i forget it so keep reminding yourself throughout the day not to judge not to judge and be open you know just silent your mind stop the chatter of your mind i will take each time that time each day to commune with nature i will sit silently and watch a sunset i will sit silently and watch birds fly flowers bloom butterflies zoom you know whatever you want that's the first law the law of pure potentiality coming to the second law the law of giving and receiving it is something that our parents have always taught us you know give and take give and take give more than you take so there's always a exchange going on in the universe there is constant constant dynamic exchange going on it is not static it is every day evolving and if we interfere with this flow of energy we interfere with nature's intelligence i'll give you a few examples of what all is flowing in the universe air is flowing air is flowing inside us and outside of us can we stop the flow blood is flowing in the veins can we stop the flow water is flowing in the rivers should we stop the what will happen if the flow is stopped the blood will start clotting we will not be able to survive the water will start start stagnating it will start clogging anything that stops flowing will stagnate deteriorate and clot so it is very important for us to keep the flow of energy going if you understand the meaning of the word effluence effluence means to flow in abundance to flow not to stop but they say he is very effluent effluence is flowing flowing in abundance currency currency means to run to flow so what are we supposed to do we will not hold anything we will not hold water we will not hold air we will not hold the other elements just like that will not hold money you also know that if you've kept a certain mm -hmm. amount of money in your almira it will not grow by itself it will remain the same even if you take it out after 2 years however the money that has gone out in the markets it has gone out for investment it will come back to you with some interest with some increase many fold that's the basic law of money right so holding money is not what we are supposed to do because it will clog and it will stagnate and it will not circulate back into our lives we need not hold anything in our life we need to constantly give give and give that's what we are supposed to do and what if we are giving you know is the intention important they say theek hai maine de diya i have given it to somebody I, there was a beggar in the street i gave because i want to receive back what is your intention behind the giving that is very important if the intention behind what you give is joyful unconditional and from the heart then the energy behind that giving will increase many fold whenever you do charity please do charity not with any condition not just because you want to improve your karmas you do charity because you love the person because you want them to improve their status in life 
from your heart and then you see the energy energy with which the things come back to you in your life that will be manifold how do we experience the law of giving and receiving bada simple hai give a gift to everyone you meet ab aap kahenge that's not possible how is it possible you're not supposed to give gifts to people right you're not supposed to give gifts to everyone that you meet imagine you are a student in a different city you want to meet your mother's friend who is in that city and your mother says you have to take a gift for uh, everyone you meet you said mere paas to limited means hai how can i take a gift yeah there's no need to buy a you know material gift that it doesn't have to have a very material value you can always take flowers by plucking them from the garden you can make a card you can say a heartfelt prayer you can compliment the lady for the way she has kept the house for the food that she has cooked how she looks the way the family behaves the way the children behave anything that you want anything that will add value to that person is a gift to that person so you may want to give anything to anyone that is up to you you want to share the gift of knowledge please share whatever you've learned new today share it with your family share it with your friends don't take anything in return share it with the world whatever that you know that is again a gift to anyone the second way in which we can experience this law is by receiving gratefully great gratitude is a concept that is very close to my heart i always say express gratitude because we need to be open to receive more into our lives by experiencing gratitude for what we already have for all the people for all the situations for all the things that we own for everything that there is for nature once we express gratitude we are able to open our hearts to receive more because once the gratitude goes out of our systems once it is given into the universe the universe will respond by more means in which we can express our gratitude <coughs> third is bless silently as you bless you will invite more blessings into your life imagine you are standing at the traffic signal waiting for the light to turn green and these children who are begging on the streets they come to you and they ask you for money and you uh, uh, obviously you don't want to encourage child begging and you will just shoo them away go away but what else can you do for them you can bless them you can bless them silently bless them for better education bless them for better conditions bless them that they get opportunities in life so that they do not have to continue this begging bless them that when they sleep tonight their tummy is full as you bless you will also receive more blessings back into your life because we are not here to hoard anything we are not here to uh, ask for things only for ourselves we want everyone around us to be affluent everyone around us to be successful and that is the key to this law right affirmations simple today i will give something to everyone i connect with do it tomorrow do it today it's 4:30 by the time the session finishes it will be 5 o'clock for the next 5 hours you go to the market you meet someone give them something give them a blessing or kuch nahi give them a blessing give them a compliment just tell them how tell the shopkeeper how nicely he deals with customers you know that's an example of giving a gift to anyone today i will gratefully receive all the gifts that life has to offer me i will receive with open arms with gratitude i am ready bless me i am asking the universe to bless me i am open i am ready and when i meet someone i will silently wish them happiness joy and laughter because happiness and joy and laughter is not just for me it is for everyone that i meet isn't it so that is the basis of the law of giving and receiving and that is the second law anyone wants to share anything anchal i have a question uh, regarding you mentioned uh, the breakup of universe like uni is uh, the single and versus song and yeah. you mentioned about uh, this thing is called like diff by different names in different religions like logos yeah. on uh, these thing like uh, what uh, what should be the next stage when one uh, one start hearing this sound like how can he go on the next level 
see uh, whenever we meditate or if they say you know when you take diksha from a guru the om or omkar forms an integral part of the shabd sumiran as they say the more we meditate on the shabd sumiran the more we meditate on the sound of the universe of om and omkar the more we are able to deeply connect with the universe and once we are deeply connected with the universe then there is no stopping us then there is the scope of even getting enlightened in this life as well so you just hold that thread hold that thread of the sound and keep on continuing your spiritual journey that's what the concept of uh, this is so for that we need a guru like or we can do it on ourselves only you may start by uh, by by just playing om in the background when you are meditating you may just uh, you know start chanting om loudly or silently you can do that you can start by that and once you feel that you reached the level where beyond this there's you know there's a wall you can't go beyond it then it's always advisable to have a guru guide or mentor in your life okay okay thank you thanks so i'll move on to the next slide if anybody has anything else to say okay <clears throat> the third one is the dreaded law the dreaded law of karma the karma of cause and effect something that we are very afraid of but deepak in this book has taken a very different take on the law of karma he says karma is action we all know that karma ka hindi meaning simple karma is action action at all levels mental physical and emotional mental is thought physical is the act itself and emotional is the feeling associated with that for example i want to have an ice cream i have a thought karma at the level of thought is created i go to the market i purchase the ice cream the physical acts in the level of karma is created i have my ice cream i enjoy it the feeling that is associated with having that ice cream is the emotional act that i have done so karma behaves beautifully at all levels it is up to us how we handle our karma see every action has a consequence that's the law of physics also that every action has an equal and opposite reaction everything that goes out will come back to you with the boomerang effect every act that we will do will come back to us or to someone else in a similar in a different manner it is about the choice that we make in our actions whether we are able to decide how we want to act what we want to think what we want to feel how we want to react that is the thing that changes our life so law of karma here in this book by deepak is nothing but the act of conscious choice making we know that every act that we do will have a consequence on us so it is very important that we do our acts consciously every moment we have an infinity of choices available to us and we take decisions on the basis of those choices some decisions are conscious but 90% of our decisions that we take are unconscious we feel that we are taking those decisions whereas it is not so those decisions are being taken by the conditionings of our mind of conditionings of the experiences that we have had in this lifetime or previous many lifetimes that we have lived so these conditionings they are triggered by people and circumstances and predictable outcomes hote hain because wahi thought process hai that's what i am thinking i am deciding based on my conditioning i am not able to undo it the outcome be predictable hoga so what happens is to have a different outcome i have to change my conditioning how does the conditioning change conditioning change by changing my actions at the mental physical and emotional level see this this is the uh, you can see this uh, diagram right just raise your hand if you can see the diagram okay great so this is the cycle of karma 
going back to that example of having an ice cream i had the desire of having an ice cream right i had that desire what did i do i went to the market i did the act of having that ice cream i enjoyed it and i stored it in my memory what has the memory done now memory knows ke ice cream khake acha lagta hai memory says whenever i have ice cream i feel good that is stored here in my memory in the memory box and again that memory will trigger my desire to have more ice cream and i will do the same act again of going to the market so i what i am doing i am caught in that circle right on the contrary somebody who is on weight loss like ye ladai kar rahi hai aage wo nahi aa rahi hai na matlab to matlab please mute yourself who is that nandita please mute yourself i'll just mute yeah so i was saying that uh, for somebody who is on weight loss what happens you know that when you're having that ice cream you get the feeling of guilt so now the feeling is not of enjoyment the feeling is that of guilt so that gets stored in your memory can okay, whenever i will have ice cream i will have guilt so your desire will be motivated by that you will not have the desire of having the ice cream because and you will not do that act because you know that whenever you will do that act an adverse memory will be created and the adverse desire will be created so that's the vicious cycle of karma so is some may if you see what is the thing that needs to be changed is the memory because memory is creating that desire and desire is creating the action memory is the storehouse memory is what i have stored over so many lifetimes in myself in my memory bank it is the cloak that i am wearing i need to change my memory and as i change my memory or you may call those beliefs as soon as i change them my desires change and my actions change and then i am free of the cycle of law of karma so whenever you want to make a choice how do you make a choice you say conscious choice making karo i was just saying make your choices consciously knowing what the outcome will be how to do that when i am so involved so involved with myself i can never take a good decision i need to step back i need to step back and witness all the choices that i have because i have unlimited number of choices at any given point in time if i am deeply involved i will not be able to make the right choice so be a witness sakshi bhav as they say whenever you want to make a good decision you have to step back step back and witness what all choices you have and ask yourself these two questions if i am making a choice what are the consequences of that choice will this choice bring happiness to me and those around me i give an example you want to take up a job you want to move out to another city you must step back and see the choices that you have to go or not to go to take up the job or not to take up the job you need to ask yourself what are the consequences of taking up this job will i get successful will i what will i leave behind what will i gain you need to understand the consequences and the second most important question is will this job that i am taking bring me happiness or will it bring happiness to people around me my family my friends so all those who matter so whenever you want to take a conscious decision please think of these two questions which become very material and remember there will always be one choice one beautiful choice which will bring you maximum happiness because it is the right choice it is the choice that will nourish you and everyone around you so break those conditionings break those beliefs all those past belief systems just break them and act in a fresh perspective in a fresh manner asking yourself consciously what is right and what is wrong right so how do i make the best choice by paying attention to the sensations in the body our body being made of five elements 
is an extended version of the universe. There are no boundaries between me and the universe. My body being intelligent knows everything. Whenever I have a difficult question that needs to be answered, I will either experience comfort or uneasiness. Ask your body. Pay attention to the sensations of your body. Ask it. Am I comfortable? Am I uneasy? What am I feeling? And where will that feeling come? For many of us, that feeling comes in the solar plexus chakra right above our navel. But for most of us, most of us, the feeling comes at the heart chakra. Our heart, being intuitive, being holistic, being intelligent, being aware, knows the answers to all our life's questions. You will feel right. And my mother has been doing that. And mother has always taught it to me, you know, even as a child, that whenever you are faced with a difficult situation in life, ask your heart and you will feel right. Because your heart taps into the field of pure potentiality. That's what it does. Because the heart knows the correct answer. So how do we experience the law of karma? As I was saying, witness the choices you make in every moment. Ask yourself, what are the consequences of the choice that I'm making? Will it bring happiness to me and those around me? Ask your heart for guidance. Affirm, today, I will witness the choices that I make and bring them to my conscious awareness. Today, whenever I make a choice, I will ask myself two questions. I will then ask my heart for guidance and be guided by its message of comfort or discomfort. And then you see, all the solutions of all the problems in the world will come to you. So that is the law of cause and effect, right? Anybody wants to ask anything? Before I move on. Somebody's um, unmuted. Okay. So next is fourth law is the law of least effort. See, the nature the intelligence, the awareness, it all functions effortlessly, carefree, in a carefree manner, in harmony and love. Because that is the true nature of awareness. That is the true nature of intelligence. If you look around yourself to the nature, you will see that the grass is growing on its own. The river is flowing. The sun is shining because the nature has aligned itself completely with the laws of the universe. They are not using their mind. But we human beings, we are unnecessarily putting our mind into everything and creating complications. Uneasiness has come through into our lives because of our mind only. Nature asks us to do less and accomplish more. Grass is not doing anything. Plants are not doing anything. And they are blooming beautifully. The trees are growing tall. Why can't we do that? The ancient sages have always taught us to do less. And by doing less, it doesn't mean that I lie around each day, every day and do nothing. That's not its meaning. I need to do work in accordance with laws of nature. And how is that possible? By being established in the knowledge of my true self. The knowledge of being a spiritual being, of being the spirit that I am. That's how I make use of the law of least effort. So you see, and nature is held by the energy of love. And what we are doing, we are driven by the whims of the ego. We are ego driven because we want satisfaction of ourself. We want satisfaction of our ego. We seek control and power over people. We seek money only for our personal gain. We chase the illusion of happiness. And by doing all this, what are we doing? We are draining the energy. We are draining whatever energy we have. 
just imagine you've had a fight with somebody how do you feel after that fight completely drained off imagine just working and working hard only for your personal gain and not contributing to the society even the corporates today have corporate social responsibility because they know that they have to give a certain share but you do you not have to hold you do not have to chase the illusion of happiness because you're just wasting energy just wasting the precious energy that the universe gives to you but when your internal reference point is the spirit your soul yourself and all your actions are motivated by love what happens there is no energy drain you are in line with the flow of the universe you are not creating blockages you are not draining off the energy you are taking the energy of the universe and that energy is multiplying how will you use that energy that energy can be used to create anything that we want including unlimited wealth this power of harmony and love will make us experience affluence and evolution so how do we experience the law of least effort accept first and foremost least effort accept accept the situations as they are the people in your life the events that are occurring the circumstances as they are please accept them completely stop fighting them stop fighting your circumstances in the moment remind yourself that the moment is as it should be it is exactly as the universe intended the moment to be once you accept once you have a complete acceptance of your situation you stop the fight once you stop the fight you stop the struggle your energy drain stops you are able to conserve that energy right that you have take responsibility for the situation taking responsibility does not mean thinking that this situation has happened because of me but taking responsibility means having a response to that problem every problem becomes an opportunity in every adversity there is an opportunity for success take responsibility be responsible don't take responsibility for the actions or the circumstances or the people in your life but take responsibility to improve the situation from now on accept it okay this has happened okay this is the situation okay this person is difficult but i take responsibility to change it from this moment and when i take responsibility after complete acceptance i am able to take charge of my life and third thing practice defenselessness stop arguing stop draining your energy by explaining your point of view to people stop the resistance and remain open to all points of view once you are able to drop your defenses once you are able to realize that i do not have to explain my point of view to everybody there is no need for me to for, for people to understand my point of view then you become open to other points of view as well you are able to understand the situations that others are facing you are able to understand what all life has to offer you so these three things taking acceptance as the situation taking responsibility and practicing defenselessness will help you achieve your desired success because then you are in the mode of least resistance you are not making any effort you are in line with the laws of the universe so affirm in the morning when you get up today i will accept people situation circumstances and events as they occur whatever is occurring i accept it completely i will not struggle against the universe because if i struggle against the moment that means i'm struggling against the universe my acceptance is total and complete i will take responsibility for my situation i will not blame anyone or anything for my situation i know that every problem is an opportunity in this guise and this allows me to transform it today i will relinquish the need to defend my point of view i will not feel the need to persuade others to accept my point of view 
and I will remain open to the points of view of others. So once we are able to accept responsibility for my current situation, I am able to take responsibility for improving my life situation from here on. And I'm able to understand the points of view of others. I am stopping all struggle. And as soon as I stop all struggle, I stop all effort. I become in line with the laws of the universe and I'm able to take forward my life in a better manner. All right? Yeah. So anyone has a question? Before I move on? On this law? Okay. So I'll move on to the next law of intention and desire. So can anyone tell me what what intention is? What 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 desire is? Can anyone tell me? What do they feel is desire? Anyone please? Uh, want to own something sorry come again uh, want to own something or have something yeah that's a desire absolutely anyone else dream or wish sorry dream or wish dream or wish yeah so a desire is something that we want to happen in the future a desire is an intention that we have right but before we come to intention, let me explain you two bases of the human consciousness. If you are aware, aware of the quantum physics, quantum field, if you know it, quantum field has two basic pillars, energy and information. Everything is energy and it carries information. You, me, we are energy beings and we carry information. Once the energy is, the information is wiped out from us, we are just an energetic being. We do not need to take birth again. So we are energy beings who are carrying information and that's it to us. That is our entity. That is our existence, right? That is what quantum field of pure consciousness is. So that energy which is carrying information turns into a being to any living being, to a human being, to a plant form, to an animal form. There are no, as I was saying, there are no well-defined edges between our physical bodies and the universe. And if we are able to change the energy and information of our body, of our mind, then we can influence the energy and information of the universe, right? Because universe and us, we are all a manifestation of pure consciousness. We are energy beings who are carrying information in a certain manner. And once we are able, we want any change in our life, what we have to do? We have to change that software. The information that is there as a software within us. And the moment we change the information of the software, we change our reality. We are able to create our desired reality. That's what this law states. So how do we do that? We can do the changes by two things, by attention and intention. Can anyone tell me what attention is? What do you mean by attention? Bringing your yes. consciousness towards something, awareness. Maybe. Yeah, 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 right. So when we say pay attention in class, what does it mean? Paying okay. attention means... Sorry, somebody was saying anything? Focus. I said focus. Focus. Yeah, exactly. Attention is focused awareness to the present. When we, when the teacher says, be attentive, pay attention, what does she want you to do? She wants you to focus where? Not in the past, not in the playground where you were playing right now or in the future, thinking about the food in the canteen. She wants you to focus in the present moment <coughs> because our attention is in the present. Our attention is always in the present. Guilt is there in the past. Regret is there in the past. Memory is there in the past. But attention, attention is not there in the past. Anxiety is there in the future. 
any kind of feeling associated with that is in the future but attention is only in the present that is why it is the power of now the book by ekhart tolle and so many other authors that we that have spoken about it it is very important for our consciousness to be in the present moment and what is intention when our awareness is given a purpose it becomes our intention i'll give you an example let's say i want to become a civil services officer i want to become an ias officer my intention is very clear my intention is that i want to become an officer but when will i act i will not go and act in the future and i can't go and act in the past because past is already gone and i will not be able to go in the future become the ias officer and then start acting upon it our intention our desire will always be for the future but for that to be achieved the attention has to be in the present because every act that we do is in the present there is no act nothing that is done in the past or in the future whatever is there this is the moment this is the moment that we are here for we need to live this moment completely do all our acts thoughts and emotions in the present so our when we are able to give focused attention to our present to the desired intention in the future we are able to achieve success i'll come back to it again I, it's a very tricky concept see as i was telling you about that example of the ias officer i am intending to do an act but i am intending to do an act for my future hard work focus attention everything has to be in the present otherwise there is what if i keep on thinking that pata nahi main banunga ke nahi acha let me give you another example i i'll give you an example i was thinking of having a seminar a seminar next month for 500 people so i have that intention i have the desire that i'll have a seminar for 500 people when do i have to work i have to work now the attention has to come now the attention will not go in the future but i what i do i create imaginary obstacles what if the tickets are not sold what if i am not able to find the sponsors what am i am not able to find the right uh, environment what i what if people don't come so what have i done i have moved to the future i have moved my thoughts to the future and that is not going to help me they are just obstacles imaginary obstacles that are coming up in my imagination so attention in the present to intention of the future is this law and you know when we have a present focused attention we are able to disassociate ourselves from the result because result is again in the future our attention is the present our attention is not in the future we are able to de alienate ourselves from the result the next law the law of detachment is kind of related to it when i come to that i'll explain it to you so how do i experience this how do i experience this first is please pay attention to whatever you want to grow in your life you water the plants that you want to grow right whatever you give your attention to will grow in your life and whatever you want to lessen in your life please stop paying attention to it simple formula make a list of your intentions clearly look at it daily for example i want to take a seminar i want to weigh this much i want to go to europe make a list of your intentions be very clear look at it before you go to sleep before you get after you get up in the morning and be very clear after that surrender to the universe aapne apna kaam kar liya you've made that list this is these are your desires these are your intentions you are surrendering your intentions to the universe as an elderly in our family has always said our even mama ji he, he told me a rule one day which i followed he says karm karo aur fir us pe chhod do do your best and leave the rest to god that's what i have ever since i learned that from him you know me and my husband we've been corporated he's uh, our elderly mama ji uh, we call him so he told me one day he said uh, his daughter was in hospital i was sitting with him that day and he was very calm and composed and all of us were very anxious and i was looking at him said aap uh, how do you you know why are you like this how come you are like this 
he said humne apna karm kiya she is in the best hospital we have taken her to the best of doctors karm karo phir us pe chhod do do your best leave the rest to god that's what he taught us and that's what we have that day and today it's been so many years now i incorporated into my life so because it is very clear once we have done our job once aapne apna karm kar liya you've given your best after that it is not in your control there are certain things that are not in your control and you have to surrender to them that's what this means right and then practice awareness in the present acha sirf list bana ke kaam nahi hua kaam to karna hai future ki intention hai humne kaam jo karna hai present mein karna hai practice your awareness in the present and refuse the obstacles the imaginary obstacles koi aayega nahi aayega what will happen tickets will be sold nothing work diligently work in the present and then you will realize that you will be able to achieve your desires i have personally observed it that way so anyone wants to say anything on this any question okay so i move on to the second last law this is the law of attachment related to the law that we were discussing earlier the law that the bhagavad gita states karam kar phal ki ichha mat kar karam karo but be detached to the outcome be detached to the outcome because they say the way to acquire anything in the universe is to relinquish our attachment to it and how does that work said so how is that possible why should we be not attached it is so close to our heart i want to become an is officer that objective is very close to my heart how can i relinquish my attachment to it the universe says do not give up your intention or desire nobody has asked you to give up your desire nobody has asked you to give up your intention just your attachment to the outcome as i was saying you know do your best but beyond certain things life things are not in your control you have to surrender to the powers of the universe as well you have to leave your attachment to the outcome to the intended desire to the things as you think that should be maybe god has other better plans for you right attachment means you are not trusting the nature's intelligence you are not trusting the intelligence of the divine because in if you are uncertain you are free from the known you are free from your past conditioning uska matlab ye hai because you know when you are attaching yourself to outcome you are attaching yourself to the means of achieving that as well you have limited mindset you have a limited mind it knows x y z ways to do a thing but there can be a to z ways of things to do that thing when we are disassociating ourselves from the way things are done from the way we think that things should be done we access the wisdom of uncertainty we are free from the known and we enter the realms of uncertainty and we surrender ourselves to the creative mind we surrender ourselves to the quantum field to pure consciousness and that is the field which is the field of possibilities which is the field of creativity and it is able to give to us something which is beyond our dreams as well right i'll give you an example here so so we are doing our goal setting we are still focused i am still focused on doing that seminar right so let's say i am standing here at a and i want to have this seminar of 100 people at this venue right in the means marketing ways all the means that i think i know are the best so for me the way i am moving from here to here is the best way this is the best way i am attached to the way in which i am doing this thing i am attached to the venue i am attached to the people i am attached to the sponsors i am attached to the outcome whereas if i open myself to all these possibilities i will see that there is a shorter way possible there is a venue which is nearby there is a marketing sponsor who is charging me less you know there are x y z kind of things that can be done in a better way why because i unattached myself i unattached myself from the outcome from the way things can be done even i can unattached myself from the objective itself 
I may find that I do not want to have this seminar after all. I can have a seminar next month in Goa. Why am I attaching myself to this particular seminar which I'm going to have in Chandigarh, right? So there can be any number of possibilities, any number of means in which my objectives can be achieved. I need to surrender to the divine will. I need to be free. I do not want to bind myself because with attachment comes binding. And when I'm bound, I'm stopping the flow of the universe. The moment I detach myself, the universe starts flowing with all its creative juices and I am able to get some things which are beyond my imaginations. That's what this law means, right? Anybody got a question in this? Okay, so how do we practice it? How do we experience the law of detachment? I just want to recap that until one said. Yeah, so what yeah. you're saying is basically you stick to your goal, but don't worry about the how. Exactly. Yeah. Stick to your goal. Even if sometimes there can be situations when the goal also might change. Change. Yeah. Okay. Right. When yeah. we are flowing in the flow of the universe, the universe might want to give me, I am attached to a particular house. I want to buy this house. I do not need to attach myself to the feeling. Because the universe wants to give me a bigger house, maybe a little later, but I'm not having faith in universe. I'm saying, no, 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 mujhe to yehi I want, because I have a belief that I'll be happy in this, that there's nothing better in life than this house. And God is sitting there laughing, ha, 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 I'm giving you a better house and you're attaching yourself to the outcome. And when you attach yourself to the desire, the universe will give you that desire. But you have stopped the flow. You have stopped what else could have been given to you by the universe? So please be open to all possibilities. The moment you detach yourself, you are open to all possibilities. That is what the law of detachment says. And that is what Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Karam kar falki kar. Detach yourself. Do your karma and then leave it. Just surrender. And that is the core. That is the core that I followed for so many years now. And uh, I believe that it is something that has changed my life dramatically. This law has changed my life dramatically. And I really advise it to everybody. Yeah. Thank you. I, shall I move on? Yeah. So how do I experience it? Practice detached involvement. What an ironical statement. Detached involvement. What does that mean? It means be there. Be fully involved. Be fully present but stay away from your preconceived ideas and notions. Be detached to the outcome, be detached to the means, be detached to your securities, your ideas, whatever you may think is your comfort. Be detached to it, but please be fully present. That's what this means. Second is accept uncertainty as an essential part of your experience. Life is uncertain. You do not know about the next moment. You do not fixate yourself to a particular goal because the only thing that is certain in the universe is uncertainty. Universe is changing, evolving every day. Universe is seeking creative expression through all of us. And it is our own free will that is modifying our own life and modifying the universe at the same time at any single given moment. So uncertainty is a reality and we need to accept it. Once we are not sure of what is going to happen, we are opening ourselves to the doors of possibilities, to new things, new experiences. I would never have thought I am being a lawyer. I would never have thought that I would do all these sessions. I would speak to people on the topics that are close to my heart. I just knew how to fight in the court of law. But when you open yourself to the new possibilities, you open yourself to success coming to you in different ways. I was a gratitude practitioner. Then I became a forgiveness expert. Then I did my Akashic reading. Then I started experiencing switch words. And I am opening myself to new ideas, new possibilities, and new way in which the universe can manifest itself through me. That's what I'm doing. And that's what essentially is, I think all of us must do. That's what this law means. We need to remain open to all possibility. Follow whatever our inner voice calls us to. Once we are experiencing that sort of an emotion, we are able to open ourselves 
to the possibilities of the universe because here anything is possible right so i'm moving on to the last law and then probably we'll take up the questions okay yeah i wanted to share the affirmations yeah i will commit myself to detachment i will allow myself and everyone around me freedom to be as they are i will not impose my idea of how things should be right i will understand that uncertainty is an essential ingredient of my experience and when i apply the wisdom of uncertainty i find my security i will step into the field of all possibilities and experience all the fun adventure magic and mystery that life has to offer last law my favorite law something that i abide by something that i have already consciously incorporated into my life the law of dharma somebody scribbling on the screen please stop doing that yeah. the law of dharma or the law of purpose in life what does dharma mean let's see we are spiritual beings all of us are spiritual beings we have taken a physical form why have we asked ourselves who are we why have we taken this birth we have taken this birth to fulfill a unique purpose that god has assigned to us that the universe that the, the pact that we did with the universe before we came down that i will fulfill this purpose this is my mastery this is my life lesson this is what my destiny this is what i'm supposed to do this is my unique purpose and it's a part of the cosmic plan so as i was telling the cosmos the universe is trying to live through me so my idea my purpose is not only mine it is what the divine wants to manifest through me and i can't stop it universe will support me in that because that is what my purpose is and it is my duty to uphold it why is it my duty to uphold it because that is why i was born that is what god has asked me to do that is what is the part of the cosmic plan since it is my duty to uphold it it becomes my dharma why is it my dharma because i have to do it i have taken birth i can't waste my birth i cannot waste my birth by not upholding by dharma i have to uphold it it is my life purpose and what is my life purpose how to identify it very difficult obviously it becomes very difficult there are three components of the law of dharma the first component is to discover our true self as spiritual beings we are divinity in disguise we are the universe itself it is just that we have taken on a physical body but inherently we are all spiritual beings the first thing that sets the law of dharma in motion is by discovering our true self as spiritual beings second to find our own unique gifts or talents everybody all of us as they have taken birth on the planet we have a special talent we have a unique gift that only we have that only we can offer to the world and to serve our fellow human beings with that talent that's the third pillar of the law of dharma it doesn't end at the level 2 we have to serve our fellow human beings with the unique talent that we have that is law of dharma for example i was telling that that i am a lawyer and i was all always constantly thinking of what am i supposed to do i am i am not supposed to do this only what is my purpose in life and the moment i started meditating i started doing my readings i started spending more time with nature starting you know started asking uh, questions i came to know that my unique talent was to share my knowledge with the world to share whatever little that i know of with everyone and to serve my fellow human beings with that talent my talent was to speak 
my talent was to express whatever i feel that i know and i wanted to serve my fellow fellow human beings with the knowledge with the limited knowledge that i have and that became my purpose and i realized that that was my dharma so my dharma may or may not bring me money if i am doing a particular act i am finding my own gift see i might be a painter and i am painting i am offering those paintings to my fellow human beings i am taking free classes of paintings you know those people are able to find their creative expression through those paintings i might not earn money but believe you me abundance might not flow through this direction abundance will flow through some other direction but it will flow through to you because you have attached your karma to your dharma and the moment there is a collaboration between your karma with your dharma the moment you are able to act according to your life purpose to serve your fellow human beings there is no stoppage of abundance so the experience of our spirituality coupled with the expression of our talent in service to humanity what does it do it gives us access to abundance and abundance that is real that is permanent and that nobody can take away from us that is the essential of law of dharma so three steps seek the divinity within you through spiritual practices see we are divine till the time we do not do spiritual practices we do not sit in silence in prayer in meditation we will never be able to get the answer of who am i who am i next your unique talent what what if money was no concern what would i do if i had all the time and all the money in the world what would i do make a list of those things that you would want to do would you want to read would you want to have books would you want to open a library would you want to do gardening and open a nursery what is that unique thing that you want to do if money was no concern and then you serve humanity with those talents you think yourself ask yourself how can i help how can i serve these three questions who am i what do i want to do how can i serve when we are able to align these three questions and seek answers for these questions true success is inevitable and i believe truly that true success is to witness the unfolding of divinity within us only and only the divinity is seeking expression through us it is the divine that wants to us to live in a certain way and if we follow these spiritual laws these set laws of nature we are able to achieve success long lasting everlasting success not only for us but for the world at large that's what i wanted to say thank you so much and now the forum is open for any questions if anybody has please anshul i have a question uh, lisa how is it how is it possible like uh, yeah are you able to listen yeah 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 i have a question it's a question regarding how we can be like more present in the moment because i have noticed like there are certain times when i uh, when i am aware about the present moment but most of the times it's not so how i can increase the frequency of that like staying in the moment See, first of all we need to accept the situations as they are we need to start being more in a meditative mode once we start accepting things they are we are rooted in the present once we are able to stay away from all the experiences and conditionings of the past and once we are able to free from all the anxieties of the future we will be able to spend more time by being rooted in the present start accepting things as they are because you accept things in the present start paying attention to things in the now start being aware of what all is happening around you and whenever your thoughts waver be a witness stop yourself whenever you feel that you are wavering to the past stop yourself because it is of no use instead focus your attention to a task that you love whenever you feel that you are becoming anxious for the future give a rein to your thoughts 
stop them from going in that direction and instead you may want to start meditating you may want to start listening to music do an activity that makes you happy do an activity in the present that you would love to do yeah, that those are the ways in which you can become more present yes thank you thank you so much anyone else all right then we'll wrap up the session thank you so much for attending this session i hope most of you or all of you would have gained something out of it and you will be able to apply whatever little things i've told you today in your lives for complete success you all can touch base with me uh, by directly messaging me uh, on the community healers group i will be readily available to answer all your questions most of you have my number as well so i can be contacted on my personal number as well thank you so much god bless you and all the best thank you thank you so much anshu thanks thank you thanks Goodbye.